It is my greatest pleasure and honor to welcome you to the event focused on the uh, work of the Vienna Center for Disarmament and Non-Proliferation Studies Task Force on Peaceful Uses of Nuclear Science and Technology. I want to uh, thank uh, the uh, permanent mission of the United Arab Emirates for partnering with us for this event. And I'm really delighted that we have a, an a, a exciting group today to speak about the work about uh, of the task force on peaceful uses and uh, provide some of the preliminary recommendations from the work of this group. It is no wonder that we are conducting this event during the IAEA General Conference as peaceful uses of nuclear uh, science and technologies are at the core of the key issues discussed during that week in Vienna. But these issues are extremely important, uh, not during that week, uh, nuclear science and technology, both power and non-power applications make an uh, incredible impact on the uh, well-being of the humankind, on the development, it contributes to health, uh, agriculture, food, environment, providing solutions for that, for these tasks. And uh, we're also in the run-up to the 10th uh, NPT review conference, where these issues, particularly the use of uh, uh, peaceful useful uh, peaceful uses applications, have been um, raising in the salience and the discussion in the last couple of years. So, in having all this in mind, the center launched a task force uh, in the late 2020 to look at possibilities of expanding uh, uh, the use um, and what approaches could be used for expanding and increasing access to nuclear science and technology, particularly as they could contribute to achieving sustainable development goals. And at the same time, maintaining prudent non-proliferation and nuclear security objectives. The task force that we assembled um, includes prominent uh, diplomats, experts on nuclear uh, energy and other non-power applications, representatives from regional organizations. And I'm deeply uh, grateful to all of them for taking that time to engage in a meaningful discussions with conducting interviews with various experts in the field. We had numerous discussions with the IAEA experts and the leadership and uh, practitioners from the field and other organizations. We don't have everyone who contributed to the task force today, but we do have um, uh, with us the chair of the task force, Ambassador Alfredo Lave who is vice president of the International Humanitarian Fact-Finding Commission, joining us from Santiago, Chile. Uh, Ambassador Lina al Hadid, permanent representative of Jordan to the United Nations in Vienna and other international organizations, including the IAE. Uh, Ambassador Hamad al Kabi, uh, resident representative of the United Arab Emirates to the IAE here in Vienna. Ambassador Kirsty Andersen, permanent representative of Norway to the international organizations in Vienna. Mr. Mesoud Balumer, who is executive secretary of the African Commission on Nuclear Energy. Uh, Mr. Wilmesh Cerveni, who is a senior advisor to the permanent representative of Hungary to the IAEA and former assistant director general of the IAEA. Ms. Diti Boga Como, uh, Executive Manager of, for Nuclear Technology and Naturally Occurring Nuclear Material uh, at the National Nuclear Regulator in South Africa. Ambassador Ben Lagner, 
permanent representative of Switzerland to the IAEA and CTBTO here in Vienna, Mr. Alda Malavazi, who is vice president of Brazilian Association for the Advancement of Science uh, in Sao Paulo, Ms. Anita Nielsen, who, uh, was former head, who is former head of the Office of Nuclear Security at the IAEA, uh, Ms. Sharon Squassoni, a uh, research professor at the uh, Elliott School of International Affairs at George Washington University, and Ambassador Marco Swiswazdi, permanent representative of Thailand to the United Nations and the international organizations in Vienna. In work of our task force, and uh, you, as you will see from the recommendations, Many of them are primarily focused at the International Atomic Energy Agency and its member states. There's no wonder that the agency is playing one of the key roles in both facilitating access to feasible users and also developing uh, safety security uh, standards and uh, implementing safeguards. But uh, as I mentioned, it is also an issue and uh, one of the and main pillars of the uh, non-proliferation treaty, and therefore a set of recommendations are geared towards the upcoming review conference. Uh, just uh, one word that we did not attempt to cover all applications and all aspects of uh, peaceful users. We chose uh, some of these areas or applications either uh, in the light of the challenges that still exist in this area and how they could be addressed, or focused on some of the uh, areas where we see the po possibility of the most progress that could be achieved in making the uh, access to nuclear science and technology uh, more broad and, and, and increase access to these technologies. We will um, cover uh, different kind of areas of um, the work of the task force and recommendation. But uh, before we do that, I will give the floor to the chair of the task force uh, and uh, my partner in crime in working on this uh, task force, uh, Ambassador Alfredo Labe. Um, Alfredo, the floor is yours. Thank you, dear Elena, uh, dear colleagues, dear friends. Uh, the effort undertaken by the task force convened by the Vienna Center and uh, translated in the recommendations we offer today is based upon the deep belief that peaceful uses of nuclear energy and science are significant to advance the sustainable development goals. While peaceful uses are politically framed in the MPT grand bargain as one of the treaty's three pillars, its relevance for humanity will endure in the future, even after nuclear disarmament is achieved. Yes, I am incurably optimistic. Through extensive study and discussion, which we intend to continue, we have confirmed that mere belief in the past achievements and enormous potential of atoms for peace are insufficient to transfigure peaceful uses of nuclear energy into the power of human security in instrument it really is. Public and institutional awareness about such potential appear as a key requisite for success awareness shall lead to the resources needed to unleash such potential. Access to nuclear applications for health remains elusive in many areas of the developing world. But access is only the first step. Resources, resources commensurate to the needs will flow only through enlarged partnerships, incorporating aid agencies, international financial institutions, and the private sector. Agencies and bodies from the multilateral system need to be convinced 
of the added value of nuclear energy to confront climate change and public health threats among current challenges. Developed countries, in particular G20 members, but also nuclear weapons possessing states must be forefront contributors to a financial endeavor demonstrating their commitment to the NPT's grand bargain. Unfortunately, extended segments of civil society and public opinion remain agnostic when not clearly inimical to nuclear energy. In his recent report, aptly titled Our Common Agenda, intended to guide the multilateral system through the turbulent current global juncture, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres demands to end the infodemic plaguing our world by defending a common empirically backed consensus around facts, science, and knowledge. He says, the war on science must end. In many ways, peaceful uses of nuclear energy, including power generation, have been a casualty of that war. To restore public confidence and political trust among states and other stakeholders, Successful efforts to promote peaceful uses must go in tandem with an enhanced culture of nuclear safety and nuclear security. A virtuous balance between access to peaceful uses of nuclear energy and such culture ought to be mastered. The Secretary General has announced a summit for the future to forge a new global consensus. In the same spirit, we believe and we are recommended that since Atoms for Peace is a necessary part of that consensus and of our common future, we propose a high level event organized jointly by the UN Secretary General and the IAEA Director General to raise the global profile of peaceful uses as a powerful tool for human security. We need a kind of a big bang in these matters. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alfredo, very much. And the uh, way our um, uh, panel, uh, our task force uh, will be presenting um, its uh, recommendation really corresponds to some of the key areas that Ambassador Lave has already touched. They are uh, roughly grouped into um, several categories. One is awareness raising of the potential contribution of the peaceful uses to, for development, uh, expanding and improving partnerships in the implementation of peaceful uses, improving sustainability and access to nuclear technology and fostering a culture that builds on excellence in safety, security and safeguards. Um, and we will conclude also with a set of recommendations for the uh, NPT review conference. Uh, following that, uh, these major areas, uh, each of our next speakers will address one of them. And it is my greatest pleasure to give the floor to Ambassador Hamad al Kabi to speak about the importance of awareness raising. Th thank you, uh, Elena, for this opportunity. I'm, I'm really uh, glad uh, to, uh, it's my pleasure to join you here today. Um, when considering the challenges and opportunities uh, related to the use and expanding uh, of access to peaceful uses and to truly realize the full benefits of peaceful uses of nuclear technology, I think we really need to improve awareness across the board. Um, the task force recommendation uh, is focused on main key stakeholders, which is the IEA, member states and industry. Um, we approach this with a view to highlight that all stakeholders play a role and must be engaged uh, and contribute to the progress in expanding the use of uh, nuclear science and technology uh, for development. 
uh, improve the awareness, will uh, facilitate uh, decisions and, and progress, uh, and will also allow uh, to achieve the high standards when it comes to safety, uh, security, um, in relation to the IA guidance and standards. Um, the task force made a list of recommendations to improve awareness uh, and communication among key uh, stakeholders. Um, both vertically um, between the experts and policymakers and horizontally between the institutions, between policymakers and with the public and civil society. The guiding principle when it comes to the IAEA, uh, we see it important to continuously uh, promote the work of the IAEA, uh, not only in terms of the development and transfer of nuclear technologies and techniques, but also to support uh, the, or the support it provides to the uh, countries uh, to apply these technologies in a safe, secure, safeguarded, and uh, sustainable uh, manner. Uh, let me highlight the following recommendation when it comes to the IAEA. Um, first recommendation is to better utilize and continue uh, to hold high level uh, events in nuclear science and technology and technical cooperation. Uh, an example of this was the IAEA Ministerial Conference on Nuclear Science and Technology um, which is uh, another one planned in 2023. Uh, the objective here is to raise uh, the profile of peaceful uses of uh, nuclear technology and to facilitate the vertical and horizontal communication on peaceful uses uh, by increasing outreach uh, beyond the energy and foreign ministry affairs to policymakers and experts from sectors such, a, such as the uh, health, development, agriculture, um, water, science, technology, environment, um, education, and possibly also finance, as well as other UN um, and international organization. The uh, second uh, recommendation is to expand outreach to uh, younger youth, uh, to schools, through education programs uh, in member states, to, uh, to, uh, in particular to consider careers in a uh, nuclear field, but also to foster better understanding um, and acceptance of the benefits of nuclear science and technology, but also to understand the role of the IEA at an early uh, age. Um, raising awareness about the hugely positive impact of nuclear science and technology on cancer treatment. Um, this is again, one of the, I think, um, great benefits of nuclear technology. It's proven to be uh, really uh, uh, a successful one and, and has an impact on many developing countries. And I think it's also important here to um, device maybe a roast of uh, champions, uh, including uh, head of state, government figures, spouses, uh, spiritual leaders, uh, public figures, uh, celebrities, and influencers uh, in order to uh, decimate and promote the, uh, the cancer programs uh, through a comprehensive array of events and, and, and public uh, events. The uh, other one is to increase and enhance the agency outreach and, and promotional campaign um, uh, to target these goals by providing maybe a virtual and in-person uh, tours of the uh, IEA uh, with, for the IEA pa partners um, across the board um, to labs, to, uh, for example, Cybersdorf labs and Monaco labs. And here maybe introduce an ability, uh, the ability to have uh, uh, remote kind of tours uh, when the technology allows that. Um, we also, I think we need to focus more on showcasing the success stories of peaceful users in the, fa in the past uh, uh, 50 years uh, at the MPT review conference, which is coming up in January, and also in other international conferences and meeting that focus on development in order to raise awareness and the benefits of peaceful uh, uses, uh, and also uh, to uh, provide impetus for replicating these successes and accelerating the uh, expansion of uses of uh, peaceful uh, technology. Um, the last recommendation when it comes to the IEA is to continue to promote uh, success uh, stories about countries where the use of nuclear technology and, and nuclear en energy uh, has uh, sustainably uh, improved the quality of life uh, and contributed to the protection of the environment. I think here there are really strong uh, stories to be presented. Um, the other set of recommendation is focusing on member states. Uh, and here, I think the recommendation is, again, to, to raise awareness through um, including ministers or high-level government representatives and experts from um, different departments within the, the, uh, 
the governments such as health, uh, water, agriculture, environment and finance, and the delegation that comes to the high level IEA conferences um, in, related to nuclear application. Uh, this is, has a, an immediate impact on the policymakers in, in particular. Um, the second uh, recommendation is to promote the role uh, and the efforts of the IEA in the development, facilitation, uh, capacity building, and other aspects of uh, peaceful uses. Um, many member states have benefited from the IEA, and I think these stories should be heard a little bit louder to uh, promote awareness of the impact of, of these trainings and, and programs provided by the IAEA. Um, the third uh, recommendation is to mainstream uh, peaceful uses in their national development uh, plans and regional development uh, agenda at national level, uh, maybe through establishing of uh, intergovernmental committees on peaceful uses for cross-sector engagement and information sharing to identify areas where peaceful users could contribute um, efficiently to development. Um, also, this applies to regional level where intergovernmental cooperation on peaceful users can also be improved in, in terms of awareness and communications and, and coordination. Uh, the next recommendation is to provide the required support set up and strengthen the mandate and allocate appropriate resources, including specialized human resources to national uh, regulators uh, and to, consult, to consolidate public acceptance uh, on, on, and confidence on, this, uh, on the safe and secure uh, nature of peaceful uses of nuclear technology. Um, of course, introducing educational programs on peaceful uses to encourage young people to consider careers in nuclear, but also to foster better understanding uh, and acceptance of the benefits of nuclear energy and the nuclear technology uh, as well as the role of the IAEA uh, at early ages uh, of education. Um, the next recommendation is to provide uh, more information to the public on efforts made to ensure the safety and security of uh, nuclear and radioactive materials, uh, as well as the uh, nuclear facilities. And this is to increase public confidence uh, in these applications, uh, not limited, but including nuclear uh, power. The uh, last recommendation when it comes to uh, member states is to, uh, for the donor and recipient state, sh that they, they should actively promote the benefits of the peaceful users and their contribution uh, to development uh, with the national development agencies, as well as regional financial institutions, uh, drawing on the information made available by the IAEA, uh, research institutions, and non-government uh, organization. Um, we also have a couple of recommendations for the industry. And here is to, for the industry to provide uh, more information to the, to the public on, on figures or sorry, on efforts uh, uh, made to ensure the safety and security of facilities or nuclear facilities, equipment and other uh, nuclear uses. Um, and this is again to increase public confidence in, in nuclear power and non-power uh, application. application. Um, the industry also has uh, really interesting success stories and I think it's also important uh, to highlight the success stories uh, uh, to increase this awareness uh, through uh, that, that, um, uh, that is using nuclear technology or nuclear applications uh, for the public um, and how they're contributing to society, development, uh, environment protection, and, and so on. So I'll stop here and I, I thank you, um, Elena. Thank you, Ambassador Alcabe, and you, you kind of made a good segue because you touched uh, on the uh, uh, some of the recommendations to engage other stakeholders uh, in the uh, raising awareness, but it's also important uh, to build these partnerships. And this is a, 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 the area where I would pass the floor to Ambassador Morakot's response to uh, address some of the recommendations of the task force in this area. Mark, please. Thank you very much, Elena, and, and thank you very much, Ambassador uh, Lebe, for the introduction um, uh, and, and for the opportunity for, uh, to, for me to join the online event today. Yes, um, raising awareness is very important, but um, uh, in the recommendation, um, in taking further steps to realize the substantial progress on the promotion or deployment of peaceful uses of nuclear energy, nuclear uh, uh, science and technology and its applications is to expand and improve the partnerships 
as we have so many stakeholders, we have uh, partnerships with um, existing or new partners, um, such as the development agencies, the international financial institutions, international organizations, civil societies, or even some in some cases, uh, private sector in some area of cooperation. This is a recommendation um, that uh, uh, the agency as well as member state could take on. Uh, the aim of uh, expanding and improving partnerships are not only to mobilize resources, but also to promote the benefits of use, uh, peaceful uses among these partners to realize the full potential of peaceful uses. The recommendations give importance to regional and interregional collaboration and networks with a view to first support the South-South cooperation uh, in order to um, enhancing the national capacity building efforts to increase peaceful uses projects, which will improve the impact of the IEA technical cooperation programs. And third, to strengthen the institutions and improve the, uh, the um, sustainable use and uh, sustainable use of it and the access to equipment. So the task force recommends the uh, uh, recommendations for the agency is that the, the director general could um, consider engaging more extensively with his counterpart, either existing or the new partners in, um, uh, uh, in development agencies of um, many countries and international organizations, which include um, OECD, um, the IEA, or other relevant internet UN internet, um, organizations, especially UNDP, who has the work, uh, the, the, the activities on uh, development work, the United Na Nations Environment Program or the UNEP, WHO, UN Water, UNIDO, as well as other regional and international financial organizations, international financial institutions, to discuss the cooperation on the expanding access to peaceful uses. Um, secondly, to um, the recommendations um, is for uh, is to revitalize and strengthen the existing WHO IEA partnership. This is to ensure that the technical capacities of these two organizations are fully to utilized in joint and complementary uh, projects with, uh, for member states, and um, the IEA could assist member states in that preparation process of the request for ODA to define the areas where nuclear technology or the I, uh, and the IEA can play a role and work with the organizations that disperse that ODA and to draw attention to these nuclear applications. Um, next is to design the joint program that increase ownership and promote uh, transparency for non-power applications with relevant partners and member states. And um, in implementing or in um, doing the activities or the, the uh, technical cooperation projects, the monitoring and evaluation mechanisms in all projects is very important to enhance accountability and increase the potential for future funding. For uh, in, in this case, funding is base, basically considered with the previous activities. So the M&E um, mechanism, it's really important for, for the, the technical cooperation programs and projects. And the agency could expand cooperation to support the capacity development and the establishment of the regulatory and legislative frameworks in, in uh, member states, and also promote the South-South cooperation by facilitating the opportunities for regional organizations to share the experiences and best practices with those in other regions in interregional cooperation and collaboration on the matter relating to capacity building. Experiences could be shared among uh, member states across region. So there's no borders. Engagement with youth and women, it's very important. And improving public perception of nuclear technology and improving access to sustainable use of nuclear technology and equipment. As um, Ambassador uh, Hamid has already mentioned, we need um, the uh, public awareness and we need um, to uh, have the correct um, understanding, better understanding that the word nuclear is not taboo. 
but there are so many things involving with the nuclear uh, technology and peaceful uses of nuclear technology, science and technology. On the member states, on the part of member states, uh, we recommend that member states could promote, uh, actively promote collaboration between the agency and development aid agencies and international organizations, in, um, the, those international organizations that I mentioned earlier, as well as this is very important, the regional financial organizations or uh, the regional financial institutions that they can get involved. They, can, they probably have certain program and project or have financial contribution to these projects and programs, but better understanding for them is, is a must. So they could um, generate better understanding among those stakeholders that involved. Um, and this is um, uh, those institutions to improve the, the bilateral, regional, and multilateral development efforts. We could clearly define the areas where nuclear technologies can play an efficient and cost-effective role when making requests to the development partners for ODA support, particularly in the area of health, agriculture, water, and environment, I think there are many stakeholders out there, development stakeholders, that they may, may, may not have um, correct understanding of how nuclear technology, science, and uh, uh, technology or applications could be very useful in these areas. So coordination with the IEA and um, among member states themselves, uh, including with regional organizations, to prevent the duplication of initiative and to optimize the use of resources is very important. So we don't need to, uh, for the development agencies, financial institutions to uh, provide uh, the uh, financial support um, on the overlapping projects. We could discuss, we could um, find the ways of uh, optimizing the use of these resources. And to support the capacity and infrastructure development, support the twinning opportunities between institutions responsible for research training and education in hospital, in atomic energy agencies and regulatory authorities. We could support youth and gender organizations. The youth power is very important. There are so many youth out there that is very active in the area of nuclear technology. This could be done at the national, regional or international levels. And um, this involves the peaceful uses. Um, another one is the regional organizations should strengthen their engagement with other regional organizations across border, across the region, to promote uh, the sharing of best practices and success stories, as mentioned earlier, between regions. I stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Sisbazdi, and thank you also for not only uh, talking the talk, but walking the walk. I know you used your vacation to reach out some of the uh, development banks and, and other organizations in your region. But as uh, our task force was looking at um, what are the uh, necessary conditions for uh, further furthering access to uh, peaceful users, we uh, overwhelmingly agreed on the uh, need for achieving the highest level of safety, security, and safeguards in that process it is one of the uh, underlying uh, uh, kind of fundamentals for um, further uh, expansion of the use of um, nuclear science and technology. And it, uh, it is my greatest pleasure to give the floor to Ambassador Kirsty Anderson who will uh, speak about fostering the culture of safety, security, and safeguards. Uh, thank you for giving me the screen, uh, Elena, and thank you to uh, my colleagues and previous speakers for your very well-formulated uh, interventions. And thank you also to the VCDNP for organizing the tar task force and for preparing for these discussions because you have done uh, an impressive amount of work. Now, I will say a few words about the three S's, safety, security, and safeguards. Uh, they are, as we know, and as we have stated, um, essential requirements for the application of nuclear power and non-power technologies. Uh, and to start with, I thought I would uh, quote my foreign minister, uh, 
uh, in her uh, uh, GC uh, statement that she held this uh, Monday. Uh, she said that uh, she opened by saying that Norway recognizes the right of NPT states parties to the peaceful uses of nuclear energy and technology. Uh, and then she was very pleased to announce, and I have to say I was very pleased that she did announce that Norway will contribute up to 1 million US dollars to the agency's peaceful uses initiative. And then uh, this announcement again was followed by a very important sentence. Uh, namely that measures to enhance nuclear safety and security is a common good that increases public confidence and promotes international cooperation for peaceful uses. And I think this is important uh, also for us to, to note. Um, States should always uh, endeavor to achieve the highest levels of nuclear safety, security, and also um, effective implementation of safeguards in the peaceful uses of nuclear energy. So, the question that we did discuss uh, in our task force was then, now what can be done to make sure that these highest levels are achieved? And at the same time, making sure that developing and least developed countries benefit from the full potential of peaceful uses. Uh, and we did have some very good discussions. Uh, the question is not to, to make any compromises on the safety, security and safeguard standards, but rather well, how can we foster this culture of safety, security and uh, safeguards? Can we do more? What can member states do? What can the IEA do? What can the industry do? And what can we do together? Now, we have made several recommendations, and I do not believe that time permits me to go through all of them. So I will just highlight a few. Um, first, of course, the agency. Uh, uh, they have so much knowledge and expertise. Uh, member states uh, should routinely use the IEA services for assessments, advisory, peer review missions to improve and develop our nuclear safety and security infrastructure. Now this will contribute to fostering cultures of learning and improvement. Then there are also a, a couple of other things that member states could do. Um, there are uh, several um, legal instruments that should be uh, universalized. Uh, I will not go through all the conventions, but for instance, the uh, CNS, the joint convention, uh, the Early Notification Convention. Um, so each convention is, of course, valuable in itself. Uh, and by their universalization, uh, commitment is expressed. And I think that is also very, very important. Uh, and then we, uh, we have uh, put forward an idea uh, of a, a mechanism uh, that should be voluntary and non-discriminatory transparent and accountable, um, so that IEA and its member states uh, should consider establishing such a mechanism uh, so that it would be easier to learn from each other. Um, so these are just some of the ideas and recommendations to be found in the report. Uh, and I seriously very much hope uh, that report will move our discussions forward. Um, and also that we will move away from any discussion uh, where we don't see um, the safety, security and safeguards um, together with the peaceful uses, because um, the standards we have should be understood as promoting peaceful uses and promoting cooperation on peaceful uses. And hopefully our reports and the recommendations will contribute to this. So I will stop here um, and thank you so much, Elena. Thank you, Ambassador Anderson, and I uh, want to, uh, before I give floor to my colleague Ingrid Kirsten uh, to um, go over the next set of recommendations, I want to warn our um, viewers and participants today that uh, Ambassador Anderson and Ambassador Sriswazdi will have to leave a little bit earlier uh, before uh, the four o'clock here in Vienna. And now we, um, the other side is um, of our discussion is uh, what are the uh, possible solution to um, uh, uh, increase access to technology and facilitate it and increase its sustainability. And I will give Ingrid the floor in a moment, but I see Ambassador Anderson has her hand up. Uh, Kirsty? No? 
for some reason we have, I see your hand up on the screen, but with that, then I will give the floor to Ingrid. Please, Ingrid. Thank you, Elena. And it's such an honor to, to be on a panel with uh, such distinguished uh, ambassadors and experts. Um, it, it's been a really interesting um, discussion and experience with uh, the task force. And um, you've heard some of uh, already some key discussions that were held and deliberations and recommendations. Um, and to follow on to what Ambassador Anderson has said, um, the task force uh, also discussed um, the sustainability um, of uh, uh, sustainable uses, so to speak, and um, access to nuclear technologies. So to address sustainability first, um, the task force proposes a fourth S as sustainability um, that should be considered in all aspects of the application of nuclear technologies to realize their full potential. So sustainability refers to that the mainstreaming of, of um, uh, peaceful uses into national policy and development frameworks. Um, also, uh, the establishment and the upkeep of rele relevant regulatory and legislative infrastructure and um, the availability of skilled human resources. Um, adequately educated and trained people with a correlation in their countries to job opportunities um, and investment at a national level, political commitment and political acceptance. All of these factors uh, contribute to sustainability. Um, without the policy frameworks to support the uh, deployment of peaceful uses and to support the, um, they, they can, they, the optimization of the use of peaceful uses will be will be complicated and expanding access will um, be challenging. So um, on, we also then discussed uh, the access to technology and related equipment, which is also central to sustainability, but um, really uh, needs to be recognized as a as a, a clear um, uh, uh, point of uh, uh, importance by itself. Um, and here the task force was cognizant of the impact potential um, unavailability of radioactive sources would have um, on health and agriculture industrial sectors, um, especially in developing countries. And the uh, task force also recognized that alternative or non isotopic technologies offer the same, if not superior outcomes, particularly if these non-isotopic technologies are adapted to developing country conditions. So some of the recommendations, and like Ambassador Anderson, I won't go into the detail of them, but just name a few, to enhance sustainability and access to, technolo to, access to technology um, are for the IAA um, uh, to um, whilst cognizant that the coordinated research projects, um, the CRPs, are an effective tool to support research um, and development and practical use of atomic energy, um, we recommend that the agency should promote the, the CRPs um, amongst member states, including those that involve all aspects of peaceful uses and cross-agency collaboration. Um, of course, to invest uh, and promote and capacity building um, in member states to continue to do that um, through the development and educate of education and training programs and fellowships such as the Mary um, Mary Skodowski Curie Fellowship Program. Um, and then there are a number of isotopic uh, based applications that have demonstrated their benefits and cost efficiency as compared to conventional non nuclear technologies. Um, for instance, those used in radiation for cancer therapy and for food safety and medical sterilization. Um, and here we recommend that the IAA and regional organizations should promote this aspect of the versatility, cost effectiveness and reliability of nuclear technologies and related techniques, where it has been successfully demonstrated. In terms of uh, alternative technologies that are non isotopic. Um, we recommend that uh, the IAA co collaborate with research centers and laboratories that are developing non-isotopic technologies for specific medical, industrial, and agricultural, as well as research applications to ensure that these technologies can be applied successfully 
um, as a routine technology in developing countries. The challenges related to the transportation of radioactive materials, of course, continues to plague uh, the nuclear sector and is increasing the cost of radioactive sources and making them harder to obtain. So there we have recommended that the IEA promote a better understanding of the application of the IEA regulations for the safe transport of radioactive material among all stakeholders to facilitate the entry of these materials into harbors and ports. And that they provide member states with specific support programs to develop and update national legislation to reflect IAEA standards and best international practices and to further assist member states to building capacity to address gaps or shortcomings in the implementation thereof. Um, for, under the members, for the member states, uh, some of the recommendations have been to improve the national processes and coordination to better identify areas where peaceful uses can cost effectively contribute to achieving national development goals um, and to make better use of IEA tools to develop uh, tools to identify assistance required by the agency. Um, one of these recommendations, such as uh, to institutionalize the National Liaison Office and to establish an intergovernmental committee on peaceful uses for cross sector engagement and information sharing to identify areas where peaceful uses can contribute cost effectively to development. Oh, we also recommend that they make better use of the CRPs to optimize the use of nuclear technologies and related techniques. Um, and that um, in terms of addressing the challenges related to transportation of radioactive materials, that uh, regulators and policy policymakers uh, harmonize transport regula regulations between countries and improve the communication about the transport of radioactive material with the general public carriers, handling agents, and others within the supply chain. On non-isotopic technologies, we recommend that, uh, um, that these uh, states consider using them where technically and economically feasible, but that also when pursuing efforts to reduce the use of high activity radio radioactive sources globally, states should take into consideration um, in particular uh, developing country needs, their local infrastructure, operating conditions, um, which may all necessitate the continued use of radioactive sources uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, for industry, we suggested that uh, the industry develop equipment that is high quality, robust, cost effective and affordable for use in medical, agriculture, industrial and research applications in developing countries and provide equipment that includes an, agree an agreement to repatriate disused sources and, in the case of alternative technologies, include maintenance and the training to support the use of um, such equipment. So these are some of the recommendations in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Inge, very much. Uh, uh, I think we're uh, finally approaching the end of our session, but we have do we have uh, also the task force developed a set of important recommendations for the upcoming NPT review conference, both for the work of the conference and for the state parties in the NPT. And it's my greatest pleasure to give the floor to Ambassador Ben Lagner. Thank you, Eleanor, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be part of this task force under the wise chairmanship of our colleague, um, Alfredo Labbe. It has often been said that the third pillar of the NPT, Peaceful Users, doesn't receive the attention it deserves at review conferences. Or to paraphrase the president-designate um, who spoke at an event here at the general conference, the centrality of Peaceful Users to the grand bargain of the NPT is not always made visible. It is underappreciated. And um, so why is this the case? Well, maybe because peaceful uses is not a controversial issue. Everybody agrees this is a good thing. It is not like one of these issues that um, makes or breaks a review conference like disarmament or the Middle East WMD free zone. Maybe also because there is a strong implementing agency working on peaceful users. The IAEA and its technical cooperation program are the main mechanism to implement Article 4 of the NPT. Now, 
In the run-up to this review conference, peaceful users has received more attention, and quite rightly so. There has been a more active discussion of peaceful users, and there have been calls for MPT states parties to make better use of the review conference to further advance the use of nuclear technologies for development. Uh, one manifestation of this are also a number of side events that have been organized here on the margins of the general conference. Uh, an excellent side event organized by the UK yesterday evening on NPT and peaceful users, and one just a few hours ago by the Netherlands, also on NPT and peaceful users. Now, we have developed in the task force a number of recommendations. I'm going to try and group them together into seven. And I'll have one which is pre-review conference, five which are actually uh, directed at the review conference itself, and one post-review conference. Now, the pre-review conference recommendation is that states parties should highlight the contribution of peaceful users, the progress being made in this area, and also their contributions in this area in the working papers, in the national reports that they prepare for the conference as an input for the discussions at the review conference. The five recommendations that are directed, for, for instance, at the outcome document of a review conference. In an outcome document, states parties should reaffirm support for cooperation on peaceful uses, with also special attention given to the needs of developing countries, the LDCs, and they should pledge continued funding through the Technical Cooperation Fund and through extra budgetary mechanisms. And in this context, also recall the success of the Peaceful Users Initiative and propose additional specific actions and contributions in support of peaceful users that will improve and expand their use, particularly also in the LDCs. States parties should also use the review conference to showcase success stories from the area of peaceful users over the past years of the um, NPT to raise the awareness of the benefit of peaceful users, for example, by organizing side events on specific areas of peaceful users. The outcome document should also make a clear connection between peaceful users and the sustainable development goals. States parties should also, in an outcome document, encourage other states parties to include peaceful uses of nuclear technology in their national development programs. And those states parties that contribute funding in this area should be encouraged to integrate peaceful uses into their development efforts and to provide support to the IA's development activities. And then a fifth recommendation, which already transitions into the post-conference phase, and which has already been mentioned by our chairman in his introductory remarks, there is a need to raise the profile and awareness of the benefits of peaceful users. And so the recommendation that we have made is for the UN Secretary General and the IEA Director General to convene a high-level event, include this recommendation in the outcome document, a high-level event that will really be an opportunity to connect the dots between peaceful users and sustainable development at the highest political level. And this takes us already into the post-conference phase. And a final recommendation, also directed at the post-conference phase, is for states parties to communicate the outcome of the MPT review conference to relevant national and international development agencies, not just to have these documents remaining in the departments dealing with non-proliferation and disarmament, but sharing the results with their colleagues in development agencies so that we have this horizontal effect of broadening the awareness and broadening the understanding of the contribution of peaceful users to sustainable development. And I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Wagner, and, and uh, I, I'm glad we kind of circled back to that recommendation uh, that first uh, Ambassador Labe voiced and you uh, now um, re, uh, reiterated about the need for or, or about our proposal of having 
a higher level uh, UN uh, IAEA uh, conference or event focused on peaceful uses. Uh, I know uh, many of the, our listeners and participants are probably wondering whether we will have time for questions, and uh, maybe for one or two, but, but uh, time is running out. There are the questions whether the report uh, of the task force will be published. And the answer is indeed it will be, but uh, we don't have it ready. Maybe check uh, on our website, uh, the vcdnp.org in a month or so. We felt that it's extremely important to convey at least the preliminary results of our work during the IAE General Conference. And once the report is finalized and published, we'll probably have uh, another event or promote it in some other way. There are also questions that are um, coming uh, through the chat about the recording of this particular session. Yes, it will also be uh, made available, maybe in a few days. We're busy running with uh, many different events and activities during the, the uh, week. And um, uh, before, I think we don't have time for questions, unfortunately, before I give, uh, I, I say a few final points, I wanted to check with uh, our chair of the task force, Ambassador Lavi, if you would love to, would like to add, add a few words uh, before we conclude the session. Thank you, Lena. Uh, simply to congratulate uh, heartily my distinguished colleagues for very good presentations and to our audience, uh, apologizing for the lack of time to include your questions. We have invested a great deal of effort in these recommendations, but this is an ongoing process and we will continue uh, feeding into this document and we will appreciate very much your contributions. This is an effort that requires expanded partnerships and participation. In this time of empowerment of public opinion, we are very much ready to listen to you and to consider your proposals. Thank you very much, Elena. Thank you, Ambassador Lave, and I want to uh, thank uh, from uh, myself and from every one of you uh, our uh, dear uh, chair of the task force and all members uh, of the task force for their hard work and excellent uh, suggestions and recommendations. I also want for you to join and thanking the speakers in the today uh, event for um, their succinct and very kind of dense presentation. But believe me, that there are so many recommendations. I wish we had more time for that. I want to thank our audience who joined us today. Again, apologize for not being able to take questions. And I also want to make sure to thank um, the Carnegie Corporation of New York, who provided funded, uh, funding to uh, us for um, conducting this important activity, and also our partner in organizing this event, uh, the permanent mission of the United Arab Emirates. With that, I would like to uh, conclude our session today. Thank everyone and wish uh, everyone who is in Vienna at the IAEA to have a very productive week. And those of you who are joining from other places also uh, have a very nice productive week and uh, all of you being safe and healthy. And um, with that, thanks a lot to everyone. Until next time. Thank you.